Today I want to talk to you about knives. Now, those of you who are aficionados and knife collectors, you know way more than I do. I am not trying to be the know-it-all on knives today, but I do think it's important for those of us who want to be prep setters to understand the importance of which ones are the ones we need the most. And so, today I'm going to introduce you to two that I think are the most important knives every prep setter should have on hand, or the very first two knives that you might want to go out and purchase as a new prep setter. So stay with us. Today we're talking about knives, and I'm not the expert. I want to tell you that right up front, but I am a prep setter, and I am the daughter and sister of some really smart guys who know knives a lot better than I do. So they've taught me a few things, and I want to share with you today two of the knives that I would recommend all prep setters get and have on hand right from the start. Now, if you just haven't really thought about it before, like I have been guilty of, if you don't really think about it, you figure, wow, I have a plenty of knives in the house and my little brother gave me for Christmas this beautiful little bone-handled knife. If I carry that in my purse, will I be safe? I wanna say, no, that's not gonna be good enough. Those beautiful little gift knives that you've gotten are great, or those old-timer knives. Here's a beautiful commemorative knife by Case. Beautiful knives and very handy for whatever they are made to do. But if you are only buying a couple of strategic, um, intentionally good knives for prep setting, I want you to go ahead and say these are not going to cut it. All right, so I'm going to take those off. Also, you're going to have butcher knives, you're going to have uh, fish gutting knives, you're going to have carving knives in the, in the kitchen, paring knives, those are all great. But for prep setting, you're going to need a couple of other things. Also, I do want to say this. Those of you who know knives can have a million opinions, and we all can, and that's fine. Gerber knives are great. I really know that they're made well. They're fantastic for what they do. This is a wonderful one that has a good um, action to how it holds the knife. It has a good grip, a good handle, and uh, a good safety on it. However, if I was buying my first knife as a prep setter, I would still say that's not the one. There's almost two sides to prep setting. Remember there's the homesteading side and there's the survival uh, so side of that. And so both of these knives meet those criteria. I'm going to suggest, of course you know what I'm gonna suggest, those of you who know knives, a Leatherman. Leathermans have been known for years and years to make fantastic knives. The most common one and popular right now is the Wingman. That's the one I carry with me everywhere I go. You won't ever catch me without it, and I, my friends have come to rely on me. They'll just holler at me to come over and fix whatever they've got on hand because they know I have this, and it's almost a whole toolkit right with me at all times. Those of you who have carried them for a while are familiar with the older version. This is my dad and brother's favorite kind, and um, it's, it's a sleeker, slim version of Leatherman that seems to just slip into your pocket easily and not catch on anything. It doesn't have a clip on the side of it like this one where it clips onto your uh, pocket or whatever, your belt. So you might think that that's inconvenient, but it does slide into your pocket nice and not uh, get caught on anything. It does come with this wonderful little uh, leather sheath that it goes in and that can certainly be hooked on your belt with the little loop that's on the back of it. So either of these are great and there's about, oh my goodness, maybe 30 or 40 more versions of Leathermans out there. There are also a million versions of fake Leathermans, little survival knives uh, that seem like good options. This is, this is one that has somebody's promotional engraving on the side, probably as a dollar store item uh, made in a different country that um, is known for not high quality. But it does have a lot of gadgets that are great. It has screwdrivers and, and a wine cork, and it has a wonderful little scissors there, um, a, a good little knife on it. But I'm going to tell you, the very first time you're tested in a survival situation, you are going to so regret having invested very little money in your knife. You need to buy a good, good knife. And I'll tell you, these Wingman knives, I think this is probably one of the cheaper Leathermans, that, full-size Leathermans that are available. This is only like 40 bucks. That's not gonna break the bank. 
it's worth the investment. These are probably 50 or 60 or up, and there are Leathermans that are over $100. It's worth every penny. And there are Gerber versions that are very similar that are, I can strongly recommend as well. I just personally prefer the quality that I've come to trust in the Leatherman tool. Now, I'm gonna take this apart just so you see a few of the tools. This is my favorite, and I think everybody has grown accustomed to these wonderful needle nose pliers on it. Oh my goodness, it also has a little wire cutter there. It has a place that you can grip something round and get it wrenched off. So if you have a tight lid, you can usually get it off with these, but the needle nose pliers come in handy for almost any project under the sun. It also has um, some scissors on it. It has a can opener. It has uh, um, also over here, we've got both versions of Phillips head and flathead screwdrivers, and it does have a serrated edge, good pocket knife. Let me say that um, the most important thing that you need to have to go along with any knife you get is a good knife sharpening stone and honing oil. I don't care who tells you that you have a knife on your hands that doesn't ever need sharpened. That's a lie, they all need sharpened. So if you jigger up the little edges on this, a lot of that can be fixed on your own unless you've really been rough with it and um, made it so poorly uh, messed up that it can't be fixed again. Most things can be fixed with a good um, stone and some honing oil. All right, so that's the Leatherman. Now we're gonna move on to my favorite survival knife and there are a million out there. So if you disagree with me, I completely respect your opinion that might be different. I'm gonna recommend the K-Bar fighting knife. So it kind of has a neat story to it. I've heard it two different ways, so I'll relate it both ways. Somewhere back around World War I, either it was a poor hunter that was out hunting or it was the military guys that were out there and they ended up having to kill a bear that had come into their camp. When they got done with that incident, they wrote into the military and said, look, we need you to invent a better knife than what we've got because yes, we killed a bear, but my word, the knife was not what it needed to be for that. So the military actually invested money in inventing a better bear killing knife. And on the original letter that he wrote that said, I had to kill a bear with it, it was so poorly written, all they could make out was the K and the A and the bear, spelled B-A-R, <laughs> kill a bear. So this is a K-A-B-A-R, K-Bar knife, getting its name from that original kill a bear incident where it was invented specifically for the need for either fighting off a bear or in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Marines have taken it and run with it, and so often it's known as a, a Marine fighting knife ever since 1923, and World War II saw a great deal of use with this exact knife. The other branches of the military picked it up. Now you're gonna be able to get it as a civilian, but this one is a pretty old version of that, and I think the old versions are just as good as the new versions, and the K-Bar has become, that word has become an actual company that makes knives, and they have a million different versions of these. Well, not a million, but a lot. So let me just talk to you through this, what makes it a great knife, okay? So you can see about how long it is. I'm gonna say, um, I should have measured beforehand, but it's more than a foot long. I think it's almost 18 uh, inches from top to bottom. It has a um, full tang, which means that this piece of metal that you see here runs all the way through the handle and out the end. In fact, you can see the tang sticking out the end right there at the end of it. That's always a good sign. You know that you have a very solid knife that's gonna hold up under a lot of weight and pressure. It has this uh, stacked leather handle that also has grooves in it. So it holds very well. It does not get sweaty too much. Those grooves kind of help with that. It helps you keep hold of it and it handles a lot of abuse without ever uh, unraveling or anything like that like some others. Also, one of the things that's my favorite about it is these fantastic guards right here. Many knives are not made with that guard and if you think of having to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat and when your hand comes up against that, you're noticing uh, the wonderful way that that catches your hand before it slips onto the blade. That's really important. Um, this is a blood groove 
it has this uh, nice metal ending end on it. If you had to use it for um, almost like a hammer out in the wilderness, it's great for being able to use as a hammer that way. I will say this about the K-Bar knife. This is a, a tactical military knife. And anyone who just goes out and buys it, or like I did at a, at a bartering event and gets their hands on one of these, shouldn't think that they are now well equipped because you're not fully equipped until you're educated. And this is a knife that requires education. You need to learn how to use it. It's pretty important that you go and have somebody that knows how to do this show you and run you through some exercises so it's familiar and wouldn't be the you know something that you were trying to learn in the event of emergency right on the spot. Also, I'll say this, the size of this is pretty large. I can't carry it with me all the time. I do like that it has a place where I could put it on my pack or on my belt, so that's handy. And it has this wonderful little hole right here that allows you to also strap down the end of it like around your leg. If you put this on your belt, you could strap another strap around your leg just to keep it nice and sturdy on you. But because of its size, I wouldn't carry it everywhere. However, if I was out in the bush, it's almost large enough to be used if it's sharpened well for everything from small things like whittling to making an animal trap if you needed to trap animals, for hunting, for um, spearing fish in a, in a shallow area, or even if I was kind of bivouacking through a forest and I didn't have a machete. This is not a machete. I, I would wish for one in that event, but this is nice and large and it's going to be what I was, would use in that event um, unless I had a better thing on hand, but this I would carry and have ready for me. So those are my two recommendations. Again, the Leatherman tool, which is like a toolbox all in itself, absolutely wonderful invention. And the second one for survival, I would get the K-Bar knife and it will get you the two most important um, lists of things that you can cover that you need to, to know how to do with a knife, those two knives are gonna help you with those. <laughs> but let us know your favorite knife or your recommendations for prep setters of the two knives that you would say everybody should have on hand. Thank you so much for joining us. We have loved being with you and we will see you again next time. Until then, go out and be a blessing to someone today. Hi, I'm Chris in Farmington, Missouri, and the scripture I have is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall never perish and will have everlasting life. Now go spread the word. <laughs>